Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. NVIDIA's 60 line of GPUs has typically been the mainstream choice for gamers looking for value for gaming on the PC. This has been true since the GeForce GTX 260 launched way back in 2008 and it continues to this day in the form of the RTX 3060 which launched in early 2021. Today we're going to look at four generations of 60 cards from NVIDIA starting with the GTX 960 in a 4 gigabyte version followed by the 6 gigabyte version of the awesome 1060, then moving on to the 6 gigabyte version of the 2060, and finally the most recent card, the RTX 3060, featuring 12 gigabytes of VRAM. 17 games are tested here at both 1080p and 1440p. Actual benchmark footage will be shown along with benchmark charts for easy reference. Timestamps are in the video description below for those of you who want to skip around. However, please consider giving the entire video a watch. That helps with the YouTube algorithm and supports the channel. With that being said, this is going to be a long video. So please grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into it. Today's video is brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. Before we get started with the benchmarks, allow me to provide some backstory on the cards being tested and explain why these four specific cards are here and why they were tested this way. The GTX 960 was launched in January of 2015 for $199. It typically came with 2 gigabytes of VRAM at the time and I've tested it that way many times in the past. It wasn't until two years ago that I first bought a 4 gigabyte version of this card for testing. I suspect many people who have the 960 today actually have the 2 gigabyte version of the card. Let me just cut straight to the chase. For recent games, 2 gigabytes is obsolete for gaming in 2022. If you have one, definitely play older games that were designed for 2 gigabytes of VRAM or upgrade your card. This will be the last time I show the GTX 960 in a generational comparison, or frankly any other video. It is over 7 years old and the 40 series just launched. If you keep a 960 after this, you are solidly in the retro experience, which is absolutely fine, totally cool, but it is not relevant to modern games beyond this point. The GTX 1060 was launched in July of 2016 for $249. At that price, it came with 6 gigabytes of VRAM. A month later, a $200 version with 3 gigabytes of VRAM was launched. Worth noting, the 6 and 3 gigabyte versions aren't the same card. The 3 gigabyte version has 10% fewer compute resources. Keep that in mind if you are comparing these results against a 3 gigabyte version of the card. Now at the time, in 2016, I recommended the 3 gigabyte version of the card, games didn't need more than 3 gigs at that time at 1080p, because I thought the future $250 GTX 2060 would be the one to buy to get 6 gigabytes of VRAM. How little would I know it would be $350 and have RTX technology, but I digress. This will also be the last time the 1060 is included in a review. It is now over 6 years old at this point, and once the 4060 launches, it'll be time to drop it from the test suite. More on that later in the video. The RTX 2060 launched in January of 2019 for $349, a price not seen for a 60 card since the GTX 260 launched for $400, yes, in 2008. Now to be fair, the GTX 260 Core 216, there's a name that is just awful, launched shortly after that for a much reduced price. However, a few unlucky people paid that $400 launch price oh so many years ago. The 2060 brought about RTX technology, a combination of ray tracing and tensor cores along with some other changes like GDDR6 and DLSS. Only available with 6GB of VRAM at launch, NVIDIA has later released a 12GB version of this card during the 2021 mining craze that saw massive shortages of GPUs. 
The RTX 3060 launched in February of 2021, about 18 months ago, for an MSRP of $329. Or it would have had it not launched in the middle of a cryptocurrency mining boom that saw GPUs selling for double and sometimes triple their launch MSRPs. No joke, these went for nearly $1,000 at one point in 2021. Our test bench today is the Intel i9-10900K running at 5 GHz fixed clock speed on a Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Master Motherboard with 32GB of DDR4-4000 CL19 RAM. Each card was tested at its stock out-of-the-box settings and MSI Afterburner was used for the on-screen numbers and the benchmark results that you'll see later in this video. Why am I still using the i9-10900K to test graphics cards? Great question, glad you asked. That is what I started testing graphics cards with on my current round of testing before the i9-12900K launched just over a year ago. Yes, the i9-13900K has now launched. The 900 series and the 10 series were tested just before the 12900K launched, and there are some older AMD cards that are eventually gonna be compared to these that I tested back then as well. It is very time consuming to go back and redo 50% of your tests whenever a brand new chip comes out. This video was originally supposed to come out before now, but between the cryptocurrency mess, which made graphics cards ridiculously expensive, and the fact that we were live streaming for a while, this got pushed back and pushed back, and here we are in the fall of 2022 making a video that should have come out in the fall of 2021. Such is life. Anno 1800 is our first game today you are seeing the 1080p benchmark recordings. In the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the GTX 960 results, a decent 42 frames per second, but honestly not what I'd call awesome given a choice. In the upper right-hand corner, we have the GTX 1060 results, a much more impressive 79 frames per second, fully playable and proof that this card has legs beyond most. The bottom left corner shows the RTX 2060 at 124 frames per second, and the bottom right shows the 3060 at 145. The 3060 is of course the winner, but not by that much over the 2060. Here is the 1080p chart. You can see the 1% low numbers follow the same progression as the averages. At 1440p, we see much the same story with lower overall frame rates. 52 frames per second average from the 1060 is impressive, but at 38, 1% low, I really wouldn't want to play it this way today. The 2060 remains a solid choice for some games, even at 1440p. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was released in 2018, two years before Valhalla and four years ago as this is being shown. Here you're watching the 1440p benchmark recordings. The 2060 provides a solid 70 frames per second average, which would be playable if not rock solid smooth in all areas with a 58 1% low. The 1060 is honestly out of its class here. It runs, but it would not be a good experience. The 3060 shows the limits of trying to use 60 cards for 1440p. It's faster, but not by all that much. An RTX 3070 would be a way better choice for 1440p. The 960 is here for completeness, but 27 frames per second average is really not useful for an action stealth game. At 1080p, we find that 1060 steps up with a 62 average and a 54 1% low, which is respectable given its age. The 2060 and 3060 both run into a 1% low limitation of the i9-10900K CPU. An i5-13600K would be much faster here. Still, 91 or 105 frames per second average respectively is nothing to sneeze at. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was released in 2020 and is naturally more demanding than Odyssey was. Surprise, surprise, the upcoming 2023 Assassin's Creed game will be even more demanding. It's kind of how it works. You are currently seeing the 1080p benchmark recordings here because if we're being honest, 60 class cards shine best at 1080p. The RTX 2060 averages 63 frames per second with a 48 1% low. This is definitely playable if not rock solid smooth and it demonstrates the above point about 1080p as well as any game can. 
The 3060 came out after Valhalla and it provides a respectable 82 frames per second average. However, the 1% low does dip below 60 by a bit, and this is at 1080p high. Valhalla has two detail settings above this, very high and ultra, so technically we're running at the middle detail settings, despite the high label. Even at 1080p, we only get 30 frames per second on the 960, but that should surprise exactly none of you at this point. You probably could run it at 720p low detail at acceptable frame rates. However, for those people, the Xbox Series S would be calling your name at that point. At 1440p, even the 3060 struggles, providing only 65 frames per second average and dipping down to 48 in the 1% low. The 2060 would be playable at medium. The two older cards are again here for completeness, not because they make any sense whatsoever. Borderlands 3 came out in 2019, and so it runs really well on both the 2060 and the 3060 at 1080p, which is what you're watching right here. 80 frames per second on the 2060 versus 100 frames per second on the 3060, either would be a great experience overall. Even the 1060 is playable, if not ideal, at 49 frames per second average. However, medium detail would be a wiser choice in this case. At 1440p, the 3060 holds 60 frames per second most of the time, and it provides a reasonable experience overall. But then again, so does the 2060 for the most part, as it came out the same year as Borderlands 3. The 960 and 1060 really show how trying to run newer games on older cards beyond their abilities is just a bad idea in general. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the 2019 reboot of the classic series, is an interesting game to benchmark due to how wildly different the various maps play. More so than the other games here, it is worth noting that this was tested on each card at different times, so a few grains of salt are needed here when it comes to the numbers. Amazingly, a GTX 1060 still is solid in this game, credit to how good this card was in 2016 that it still holds up this well. The 960, on the other hand, is completely out of its depth. However, in fairness, we are running at 1440p here, so there's that. The RTX 3060 is nice with over 60 frames per second in the 1% low, a great result for casual fans of the series. Here is the benchmark chart. Again, don't read too much into the specific numbers. The footage speaks louder. Cyberpunk 2077 is next, and this time we are going to show you a different split. Trying to run this game at 1440p on the two older cards would have just been silly. So here is 1080p low detail on the GTX 960 on the left hand side of the screen versus the 1060 on the right side. Shockingly enough, the 1060 runs it at 49 frames per second average, which is playable if not smooth. The 960 on the other hand was, well, I guess it was playable if we're being kind. Don't. Just please don't. I also tested the 1060 at high detail and it ran much like the 960 did at low detail. Functional, but not enjoyable. We ran at 1440p on the newer cards and the results were just okay. If I had this to do over again, I'd have tested everything at 1080p. I didn't, so they could be compared to the 70 series and 80 series of the cards at 1440p, which I only tested at that resolution. However, it's a good example of why that sounds great in theory, but in this case, falls apart in practice. 51 frames per second average on the 3060 does run, and you could play it here. However, the 1080p experience is going to be far superior in a way that a chart or even a video doesn't show. Dirt 5 is a lovely driving game that released in 2020 and it typically runs pretty well on anything modern. Here you can see 1440p testing and the 2060 is holding its own at 69 frames per second average and a 59 1% low. Very nice. The 3060 steps it up to 85 and 73 respectively. The 1060 really falls apart here, dropping all the way down to 34 frames per second average. It's playable, but it's not ideal. This may very well be the faster VRAM and newer cores at work here. Dirt 5 did come out a year after the 2060 launched, so it was probably aimed for that card at 1440p. 
You could get 1080p medium working quite well on the 1060 if you needed to. The 960, however, was just, can we just have a funeral for that card already? F1 2022, on the other hand, runs amazingly well at 1080p on the 960. 64 frames per second average and a 52 1% low. Perhaps we called for that funeral just a bit too soon? What's really happening here is you're seeing a newer game running on a much older game engine. The rest of the cards just run faster and faster, topping out at a whopping 288 frames per second average on the 3060, which, if that's not fast enough, well, maybe you should be driving real F1 cars. At 1440p, the 1060 does a respectable 80 frames per second, and the 2060 runs at 124. I would like to call out the 3060 here, which runs a full 100 frames per second faster than the 2060 at 244 frames per second. Crazy, but that's an older game engine at work here. Next, we have Far Cry New Dawn, the full price DLC expansion to Far Cry 5. Yes, I know it wasn't full priced, nor was it a DLC. I just like making that joke. I'm sure it's in the contract somewhere. You're currently watching 1440p benchmarks here, and the 2060 runs very well at 88 frames per second average, not far behind the 3060 at 101 frames per second. The 1060 is even holding on just barely below 60, and playable if you turn a few details down to medium. At 1080p, you could play this all day long on the 1060 at high detail, or drop to medium detail, and even the 960 would at least be functional. Or, if you have a high refresh rate monitor, the 3060 will get you 132 frames per second average. A friendly heads up, the 3060 does 101 frames per second at 1440p in New Dawn, but it drops down to 83 frames per second in Far Cry 6. So if you want a card that will last a few years, buying more GPU never hurts if you can afford it. Gears 5 at 1440p shows more of the same, with a shockingly linear performance scaling from the 960 all the way up to the 3060. While I wouldn't jump up and down at 51 frames per second average on the 1060, it is not unplayable. The 2060 shines here at 76, and the 3060 takes the crown at 100 frames per second even. Ghost Recon Breakpoint continues to surprise me with its recent optimizations. When this game launched, it was a buggy, stuttery mess that struggled on even high-end PCs to provide smooth performance. A few years later, and at 1440p, we are seeing 60 frames per second average on the 1060 of all cards. Do keep in mind that it will not do that in heavy combat or all environments in the game, but it's impressive regardless. The 2060 provides completely playable 1440p gameplay here with a 1% low of 80. Even in busy areas, you should hold 60 frames per second most of the time. At 1080p, you could even play this on the 960, which is very much not something I would have said a few years ago when this game came out. Still, not what I would recommend, but it could run at 1080p medium well enough. Horizon Zero Dawn is another game that was harder to run at launch than it is today. At 1080p, we've got a solid 60 frames per second average on the 1060, 96 frames per second on the 2060, and 117 frames per second on the 3060. This is a good reason to wait for games to go on sale a year after they launch. You save money, you get a bug-fixed, updated, and patched game all in one. That's what I call a deal. 1440p is also impressive with 65 frames per second average on the 2060 and 82 on the 3060. Just don't try it on the 1060. Red Dead Redemption 2 can be shockingly hard to run. The gap between the 1060 and 2060 here surprised me. At 1440p, we're seeing 24 frames per second average on the 1060 versus 48 frames per second average on the 2060. It is a rare game that doubles performance in a single generation. Having said that, full disclosure here, the 1060 and 2060 tests on this game were not run at the same time. It is quite possible that a game patch or a driver update slipped into the testing between those cards. The 3060 was tested more recently and the 56 frames per second average should be pretty spot on. I would not play this game at 1440p on any of these cards. 1080p is where they should be.
Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next, and this game really, really does not want to run at 1440p on a GDDR5 VRAM card, does it? The 2060 is not double the frame rate of the 1060, but it is darn close. 45 to 85 frames per second in one generation. The 2060 really has done well for itself over time. The 3060 shows how well it stands up as a 1440p card here, so long as you play four-year-old games on it. That is a key point worth considering with any card purchase. What are you going to play on it? The Division 2 is one of my favorite games of 2018. It really runs well on modest hardware, but it will provide superior performance if you give it premium gear to work with. This game will, no exaggeration, use all 16 cores of a Ryzen 9 5950X to provide gameplay that's like butter melting over freshly cooked corn on the cob in the most demanding of battles. At 1080p, the 1060 is still a solid choice with an average over 60. However, once again, the 2060 just blows it away with an average that is nearly double at 115 frames per second it actually gets even more impressive looking at 1440p. The 2060 has a 1% low, almost equal to the average frame rate of the 1060 at 1080p. Yes, really, the 3060 is solid at 93 frames per second at 1440p. Watch Dogs Legion showed so much promise. Alas, it lost the PR battle to Cyberpunk. As all updates and support were cut off over a year ago, the game is sadly orphaned now, which is a shame for such a promising title. This is 1440p, naturally the 960 is out of its depth here, but that wouldn't change at 1080p either. That is also true for the 1060, it cannot hold 60 frames per second average at 1080p. You need a 2060 to do that, which surprisingly enough, it does even at 1440p if just. The 3060 shows off here with a 1% low that's almost at 60, but not quite. Here is the 1080p chart. 70 and the 1% low at 1080p on the 2060 is respectable. The 102 on the 3060 is pretty decent for a demanding game. Just keep in mind this is a 2020 game on a 2021 card, and it's about to be 2023 in a hot minute. Finally, we have World of Tanks, the Encore 2.0 benchmark at 1440p ultra detail. This is our only ultra test. Everything else was high detail because this benchmark does not have a high setting for some strange reason. It is low, medium, or ultra, and that's it. The 960 does shockingly well here. It is not good in general, it's just good for what it is. The 1060 manages over 60 frames per second, but it's the 2060 that really shines here with over 110 frames per second. Looking at the chart, the difference becomes obvious. Step up to the newer cards for a much better experience or turn down the detail and resolution, either way works. Before we get to the average charts, I wanna to talk to you about the 3060 itself. In terms of raw performance for the dollar, it is soundly beaten by the AMD cards that currently can be had for the same price point. As of the filming of this video, you can currently buy an RX 6700 XT card for $10 more than the RTX 3060. The 6700 XT has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, just like the 3060, and it soundly beats it in general gaming performance. How so? In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 3060 averaged 93 frames per second, while the 6700 XT averages 134. That is a 44% performance gain for the 6700 XT. So, case closed, the 3060 is dumb, and you should all go buy a 6700 XT, right? For pure raster performance in games, yes, it really is that simple. However, life is often not that simple. Many people buy NVIDIA cards because they have a better track record with drivers than AMD does. No one is perfect. Fermi, we're looking at you. But overall, NVIDIA does do a better job here. Then there are the non-gaming performance issues to consider, such as CUDA, NVENC, and Tensor, which AMD lacks. Sure, you can encode video on RDNA 2, and it does have compute, but when it comes to non-gaming features, there is no contest. NVIDIA wins that one hands down. 
For example, if you use Adobe Premiere to edit videos, like we do, you would be out of your mind to use an AMD card. Adobe and Nvidia are just made for each other, for better or worse. Another factor to consider is that not everyone wants ultra max performance. You are watching a 60 series video comparison after all. The 4090 exists. Go buy one of those if money is no object. Rather, if you have a GTX 1060, a 3060 is a drop-in upgrade with no fuss over drivers or support. Move to AMD from your 1060 and you need to DDU your NVIDIA drivers, boot into safe mode, and worry that some games or software may be different. With a 3060, you can expect a supercharged version of your 1060 that works just like you'd expect it to. For many people, that aspect matters more than raw frame rate for the dollar. The choice is yours, of course, and choices are a beautiful thing. Here is the 10 game average chart for 1080p. As you can see, there is a reason the 960 is being retired. 41 frames per second is technically functional, barely. However, we're cheating a bit by using a four gigabyte version of the card, which most people don't have. So there is that. The GTX 1060 holds on with a 70 frame per second average that is solid and it is functional for the moment. You could keep using it today if you really wanted to. However, it's very much on borrowed time. Totally understandable if you skip the 3060, but if you do skip it, the 4060 should be an automatic purchase when it launches sometime next year, which is why we won't be comparing the 1060 to the 4060. The RTX 2060 is where things get interesting. You can probably skip the RTX 3060 if you own one, and perhaps even the 4060, if you're okay with your card ending up where the 1060 is by the time the 560 launches in two and a half years. For 1080p, the 2060 remains a solid card, and if you can find a used one for under $200, it is worth considering, even in 2022, for a budget build or upgrade. That brings us to the RTX 3060, a solid 1080p card, even for high refresh rate monitors in some games. It is, however, terrible performance if you look over to Team Red and what AMD offers for $350 in the 6700 XT. Another option to consider is to look at used RTX 3070 cards from eBay. Examples can be found for around $350. If you're okay to go that route on what is almost certain to be an X mining card, the 3070 is competitive with the RX 6700 XT and beats it in some games. Here is the 16 game average chart for 1440p. Cyberpunk is the one game missing from this list because it was not tested at 1440p on all four cards. The 960 results speak for themselves. So we'll move on to the 1060, which simply does not hold on here anymore. Yes, in some games you can make it work, but it's really out of its depth here. The RTX 2060 remains functional, if not ideal, at 1440p. The average of 78 and the 1% low of 62 look nice, but those numbers are helped up by games like F1 2020 and World of Tanks, which push this to a normal looking number. Remove those two games and these numbers won't be so pretty. The 3060 is a useful 1440p card. However, it's very conditional on the games that you wanna play. Keep in mind that many of the games tested here date from 2018, three years before this card came out. Many people called this a 1440p GPU when it launched, but that's only really true for games that launched when the 2060 was new. If you really want to play at 1440p in new games, get a 3070 or a 6700 XT. The experiences will be altogether nicer and you will have some breathing room in front of you. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. 
We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable, and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs. Thank you all so much for watching to the very end of this video. Two gold stars for all of you here. Like, comment, subscribe, and do all of the things. Links in the video description. I will have links to the AMD RX 6700 XT. It really is a beast for $350. I'll have links to eBay for the RTX 3070 used. If you're okay with a mining card, $350 gives you a lot of performance for the money. If you want a used cheaper card, the 2060s for 180 are at least worth considering, or you can buy a new 3060 if you want a new card with this level of performance. Or you can pay $500 and get a brand new 3070 if you want. There are a lot of options, which there weren't a year or two ago, and honestly, that's why this video didn't come out a year ago. I started benchmarking it, I started tooling up with a script, did some more work in the summer of 22 on it, and it really came down to the fact that so much of the stuff was overpriced. I recognize it's not fun to watch these comparison videos when all the graphics cards are selling for double MSRP, which I totally get how annoying that is. So here we are in the fall of 2022. There are used cards you can buy. There are new cards you can buy. Options, choices, and budget gaming are back. And that is a beautiful thing. Leave your comments down below on what you own or what you're upgrading to, what you think. Are you waiting for the new RDNA 3 cards to come out? Are you waiting for the 4060, which will probably come out maybe middle of next year? The 4070 Ti is due to come out around CES in January, so I don't expect to see a 4060 until March or April 2023 at the soonest, maybe the summer. There is so much leftover 30 series stock, NVIDIA is kind of slow rolling the launches because they kind of need to move all the existing cards. It is what it is. In any case, thank you so much for watching this entire video. Your support and viewership is greatly appreciated. I will see all of you next time. NVIDIA's 60 line of GPUs has typically been the mainstream choice for gamers looking for value for gaming on the PC. This has been true since the GeForce GTX 2060... 2060... The GeForce GTX 260. Not the 20, but the 2. The 2! It's been a while. This has been true since the GeForce GTX 2060. This has been true since the GeForce GTX 260 launched in, tw in 2018. 2000. In, I'm not used to saying these old numbers. We will get there. That's going to be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> My lovely wife over there is like, really? You're on take five of part one. This has been true since the GeForce GTX 260 launched way back in 2008, and it continues to this day in the form of the RTX 3060, which launched in early 2021. Yes, first try. The 2060 averages 63 frames per second with a 48 1% low. This is playable if not rock solid smooth and it demonstrates the above 1080p point the The 960 does shockling shock shock it shlockers. The 960 shlockles itself. That's a different channel. Onlyfans.com slash tech deals. This is a comment that is not often enough acknowledged in reviews. Not everybody wants the best dollar cost per frame per second. Some people want easy.